And then she said, I don't have scoliosis. I just have a wonky spine. And we're live. You are now listening to Radio Rufus. Hello and welcome to Radio Rufus. This is the number one Streets Won't Forget podcast on whatever delivery service you happen to be using. As always, myself, the debonair Rufus Rice, is joined by my absolute... Irish legend of a producer, Aidan, and we take you through the latest and greatest news, sports, games, tunes. It's the classic radio variety show, though some of the scoops might not be quite as fresh as you are expecting, because of course, as always, we are basking in the warm glory of our 1960s era radio station. Here's what's coming up on today's show. We've got... um, an alligator getting stolen, wrestling in Uganda, and another message from my grandma. (laughs) So just scintillating stuff all around. Let's get into it with our first segment, Not News. These are the headlines. A Taiwanese man has been arrested on suspicion of fraud after amputating both legs in the hopes of winning a $1.3 million insurance claim. A New York man has vowed to regain custody of his alligator after it was seized by the Department of Environmental Conservation. Uh, A veteran lobster diver was swallowed whole by a humpback whale. And a Canadian janitor has been sentenced to prison for six months after asking university students to hit him in the nuts. Let's get into that now with our first story. A Taiwanese man arrested on fraud charges after chopping off both his legs and falsely trying to win Over a million dollars in insurance claims, 23-year-old Zhang, a university student from Taipei, is a legless wonder after last week. His decision to put his feet in a bucket of dry ice for more than 10 hours, causing irreversible frostbite and a necessary double amputation, was influenced by his school friend Liao. Liao had lost money trading cryptocurrency and misled Zhang into signing a legal document obligating him to pay Liao the eye-watering sum of eight hundred thousand dollars, bad friend, really bad friend. <laughs> yeah, you know when you get stitched up by by your mates, this would be this would be a tough one to take. I'm not sure because we all have mates who are objectively bellends, but because they're your friend, it's okay. Yeah, they get away with certain. I things. think this one might be a deal breaker. Eight hundred k is a lot. Yeah, it is. <laughs> in a last ditch attempt to try and guilt his friend into helping him, he told Zhang that gangsters were after him. To try and like the old gangster, yeah. yeah, yeah. The chase will be a lot easier for them now. <laughs> I can tell already. This guy did not. Is this guy's not involved with the mafia at all? What he's ha- what he's got is a sports betting problem. <laughs> <laughs> he has not been playing responsibly. He has yeah. not stopped when the fun stopped. Imagine losing like eight hundred grand, and in the process of trying to get it back, you also lose both your legs. <laughs> you probably you probably be a bit pissed off at that, wouldn't you? There's no way to say it. Actually, there is, because Ray Winston is licking his lips right now (laughs) with the sort of profits he's bringing in for Bet365. Anyway, the two concocted a scheme to make the money. I'm really confused about this, because this bloke, Liao, right, he's lost some money trading Dogecoin or whatever, or, you know, Chinese Dogecoin, and then he's made his mate sign a thing paying him his losses back, and then they collaborate on a scheme yeah. to make the money? Usually it's just people, that, like, they'll walk out in front of a van or something. There's and a lot of teamwork them. in yeah. this. It surprises me, yeah. The two concocted a scheme to make money by falsely reporting injuries and then claiming the insurance money. On January 26th, Zhang entered a hospital after soaking his feet in dry ice. Medical personnel were immediately suspicious that the injuries were fake as the frostbite was neat and symmetrical and there were no sock or shoe marks. (laughs) Nonetheless, the injuries were so severe they necessitated the amputation of each leg below the calf. (laughs) At least now we know if we're ever going to try and stage frostbite to keep our socks on. Yes, so that's a top tip for you at home. If you want to commit insurance fraud through um, amputation via frostbite, socks on. It's the same as the no homo advice. It's not, <laughs> it's not gay if socks are on. Yeah. And it's, not, it's not fraud if socks are on. So um, that's good to know, everybody. Uh, the two blokes submitted a statement to the police when asked about said injuries, uh, saying that Zhang got frostbite whilst riding a motorbike. This happened in Taiwan, of course, which is a subtropical region. 
And on that day, I actually looked it up on the exact day. It was 14 degrees Celsius, <laughs> which is not quite cold enough to get frostbite. Surely if you're going to try and convince medical professionals that you got frostbite, do it in a night that's a slight bit nippier. Yeah, but um, I, they are stuck for choice there because Taiwan just is not that cold. Yeah. I, I th- this is probably the only case of frostbite they've ever had. <laughs> Although, I, <sighs> It'd be like claiming you got heat stroke in December. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's just, it's, it didn't even have a chance to get off the ground. Yeah. They, you guys need some better script writers, I think. They've been hit hard by the uh, the writer's strike. <laughs> they needed they needed people to, to come in and up a good story. This reminds me of sort of season eight and nine of The Office, like where the storylines have played out. Yeah. We've got a contract to, for this many episodes. Something's got to happen. Let's add some new characters nobody likes and make all the ones everyone does like into twats. Yeah. And just ruin it for everyone. Yeah, just ruin it for everybody. And nobody can believe any of it. That's what this reminds me of. Although I have a fairly similar actual life experience to this. I got the early stages of frostbite in China. Right. So yeah. what part of China was it? Yeah, it wasn't this bit. Yeah. Um, I was in Inner Mongolia. Right. Which um, used to be Mongolia until they built um, a fuck off wall. <laughs> Not sure if you've heard about it, but they, they built a pretty impressive wall. Um, and it's so cold. We went skiing there as part of a business trip, looking for new markets for skiing, like new places where people might want to go skiing. Turns out, Inner Mongolia is not like the Chinese Alps. Like, it's not great. <laughs> it's not brilliant. And our bag on the plane on the way there, we came out and it was just covered in fish ice. Fuck me. So what I assume had happened is some neek was transporting a fish in a tank. <laughs> The tank had burst in the hold and the water had come over, sprayed over our bag and then just frozen in the air. <laughs> and we came, we came out, this, this thing smelt like... Oh, I don't even want to imagine. Yeah, it smelt like um, a chippy. I think I would rather frostbite than the smell of fish over all my fucking... Yeah, it was, it was nasty, belongings. man. And we had to drag that thing around China. Oh. Uh, we went to a ski resort and God, it was, it was so cold. Yeah. Proper Siberian temperatures. It was one run and then in. So you and think these boys, if they had just got a flight to like the next place over, they would have got away with it, maybe? I, I don't know. The chance? Chinese police don't take much shit, mate. To be <laughs> honest, I think they might have got off with a with a uh, stronger punishment. I reckon. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> There's also that story. Speaking of losing legs, do you remember that story? A few <laughs> years. <laughs> Sorry. Such a fucking segue. <laughs> This this funny because not only does it have to do with losing legs, but it's also a bit Chinese because there was that American university student who ordered a Chinese takeaway mm-hmm. and then got a disease so bad he had to have both of his legs amputated. Fucking hell! A couple of years ago from a Chinese. Yeah. How does that? Wh- what was wrong with the food so severe that he lost his legs? Usually you're just Can you look up for what he got. Days? Really, just look up sort of China Chinese takeaway leg amputation. I reckon that will be. That sounds like a metal bond. Yeah. <laughs> Student 19 has to get his legs. And all 10 fingers, fingers as well. <laughs> all of his fingers. Both legs and all fingers. I mean, at that Sepsis. point. Sepsis. Leftover Chinese. He might be the worst javelin thrower in the world. This is a wake-up call for me because I am an absolute whore for like getting a Chinese <laughs> after a night out. And then yeah. the next morning waking up and be like, fucking, there's breakfast served. Yeah. It's, it's good when you get a big one, because that's just two meals in one. It is, yeah. Um, but that's also a double whammy on the chances. Well, it's, but you're basically playing sepsis roulette with the, <laughs> the Chinese takeout. Yeah. So this, also, was in, this was in Boston. Okay. I would like to keep at least some of my fingers, but like preferentially all my Would legs. you rather lose both legs or all ten fingers? I think both legs. You'd just be walking about with two fucking spuds on your wrists, which wouldn't be much good. Well, how, well, how are you going to like... Crack one off with with just the, the just yeah ex- exactly <laughs> mate. I just I think I'd rather lose both legs because I think prosthetic legs are easier to do than walking around with two stumps. Yeah, I'm just I just can't. I couldn't really. <laughs> it's do a funny it. sentence, but I I can't imagine not being able to grip anything ever again. Yeah, especially with my fucking job. How am I going? Oh, editing. Would be uh, imagine that I've got that <laughs> You need you need um, bigger keys on your keyboard. 
It's not exactly precision, is yeah. it? I also don't feel like I use my legs enough to actually get the good out of them. I'm also a very slow runner, and I feel like if I got lost my legs and then got some of those Oscar Pistorius like springy blade runner springy type blade shit. yeah things, like I'd be faster. I reckon I'd be actually faster. I wonder is that actually the case? Where if you get those things, you can up people your did speed? think he was cheating. Yeah, because he had a couple of rockets on. I <laughs> I suspect it might be sort of like cycling. A lot of people cheat in cycling because they have they put a motor in the thing that Jesus. just just sort of whirs and then just spins the pedals. <laughs> so he's got motorized legs. Yeah. Although to be fair, I think cheating out allegations are the least of his worries at the moment. <laughs> yeah. I like how this fucker was just trying to clear some debt, and now he's going to have to drag himself around like Oscar Pistorius. Yeah. It's a real <laughs> every everything we've talked about so far is just a lose 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 for everybody, <laughs> except for whatever crypto pyramid scheme Liao was involved in. Did Aren't you ever they- get oh. into crypto? Um, nah, not really. I stuck like maybe twenty quid on Dogecoin, made a oh. hundred back, and yeah. just cashed out instantly and bought Warzone operators. I wasn't like risking. Man, I, think I didn't that's want to become. A deal, to yeah, be I, I think Dogecoin make... is in the toilet now. So. It really was. Yeah. yeah, I got it sort of as it was on the way up, but I considered sticking maybe another twenty in, but I didn't want to take that risk. Like, mm. yeah, fair enough. I I just think like Bitcoin and stuff. I just genuinely don't understand it. So why am I investing my money in it? You know what I mean? Yeah, there's so many people selling like courses on it, and the same people selling those courses lost it all. <laughs> And all the people selling the courses, if you're really that good at trading, you'd just be trading. You wouldn't be selling the courses. So you're just a fraud. So you can't take information from anyone here. It's a shit sandwich. Anyway, our next story. (laughs) A New York man has vowed to regain custody of his alligator after it was seized by the Department of Environmental Conservation. Not conversation. That would be an interesting department. (laughs) Environmental conversation. Just chatting about recycling. What's your favorite tree? (laughs) Top five trees. That's what they do. They go around top five trees. Maple. I literally just know the the Minecraft trees. Yeah, the Minecraft Oak trees. And birch and actually fuck us. I think they've added some new ones since you last played. Yeah, it's been a while. There's some rogue stuff in there now. You had a, a, like returned to Minecraft recently, didn't you? Yeah, I I uh, just did a quick end of dragon run. You know, just slayed it the <laughs> other day. It was a lit Saturday night. People often ask what my life is like. You know, they don't expect that, but. What do you tell I them? I was crafting. I was yeah, crafting. Yeah. Oh, oh, I'm telling. I tell them like I'm, um, you know, plowing every night. I would much take the the end. I'd rather craft. Battle. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and and the dragon and a wank. That's a good night. <laughs> couple of Lindors to top it off. Wait, that's a class night. Less faff. There's no risk involved. Yeah, that's true. Anyway, <laughs> let's talk about this fucking alligator. Um, Tony Cavallaro's favourite pet, a 750-pound 11-foot alligator named Albert, was removed by conservation officials on March 16th. The alligator is about 30 30 years old, is blind in both eyes, and has spinal issues. It's like, my granny got the exact same pet just recently. (laughs) This alligator got the granny bill. (laughs) It it sounds like it has fucking multiple sclerosis, which is never a good thing. It's bad enough getting it once. Yeah. One sclerosis is enough. Yeah. Multiple is you're fucked. (laughs) I've actually never heard of anybody having just one sclerosis. It's always multiple sclerosis. Yeah. Is everyone just really unlucky or does it only come in pairs? That's what I mean. It's like Noah's Ark. They're all they're all turning up two by two. I can tell from the name that he likes this pet too much. Albert is like a regal name. Yeah. That's like a posh name for an alligator. Just, I could tell it takes pride of place. Like it is the most important thing in his life with the name Albert. Yeah. yeah. I, I really applaud the rogue choice of pet. Like some people are just up for like a hamster, maybe a house cat, yeah. but he wanted a fucking alligator. I don't like pets because I th- I find there's a lot of admin involved. Yeah. And I say that talking about like a normal dog, let alone this arthritic heifer lump <laughs> that could, let's not forget, kill you at any moment. Yeah. <laughs> I don't care that it's blind and spinal issues. I'm not going anywhere near this thing. If your cat is maybe in like a bit of a mood, maybe you'll get scrubbed. Yeah. If this fucking alligator wakes up in the wrong, si- wrong side of the pond, you're fucked. Yeah. Like if he just takes an ocean against you, like your his life is in your fucking. Hans. He clearly loves this thing, though, because he dug up his garden and installed an in-ground swimming pool to allow his gator to swim and cool off in the hot summer months. That's a big Christmas for an alligator. <laughs> You'd be well chuffed with that. Yeah. The, the I don't turn- think my parents have ever done anything for me like that. He dug up his entire garden <coughs> and installed a pool. <coughs> 
just for a bloody alligator. Just so Albert could have a nicer life. You know those pool cleaning TikToks? They're fucking unreal. I feel like they'd have to do a proper number on the alligator swamp. Yeah. feel like they're dirty creatures, man. I can't imagine them smelling the nicest, especially with how fucking old they can be. Yeah. Also, one Bad thing- Bad breath from an alligator, I reckon. And a lot of it. Yeah, you're not He'd be brushing, stinking up the gaff. You're not brushing an alligator's teeth. That is a fucking risky move. It's like trying to get the smoke smell out of a sort of, <laughs> you know, one of those gentlemen's clubs <laughs> from ages ago. Just stuck to all the cushions it's and stuff. It's just alligator stench, yeah. man. One thing that I didn't really understand whenever I read this was that he needs to remember that he is in... Sorry, it was... This was in America, yes? Oh, yeah, this, yeah. this is in America. If he wants a company that weighs 750 pounds, he doesn't need to stray away from humans. <laughs> That's true, actually. Although I think, like, he's a looker, though, Albert. He's not a munter. I had a look at him. Yeah. He's quite a sort of... Well, as far as alligators go, yeah, pretty to look at. He's hot for an alligator, mm. whatever that means. <laughs> Said he previously had a permit to keep the gator, but did not renew it after it expired in 2021. I'm going to say it right now. Nobody should have a permit for an alligator. Yeah, that's you, a Nobody problem. needs one of these. Nah. I don't know on what grounds you can claim... That you need an alligator, mate. Just, just get like even getting a snake's pretty weird. Yeah, that's up. That's a bit out there. Or yeah, like the bearded dragons and stuff. Yeah, get mate. one of them. It's just a small uh, once alligator. You, once you start like uh, pillaging the rainforest for stuff, just just get something from your area, man. Just mm. go down to the dogs trust or whatever. I don't. I just don't. I just don't get it. Alligators. No one needs those. No one needs a lion. No one needs a tiger. I mean, we wouldn't have Tiger King. Obviously, great show. Yeah. But come on, mate. There could be a fucking alligator king coming if this fucker keeps continuing to pick up I would love alligator king. Yeah. That would be great. Um, I don't think I would. I could have an alligator in my one-bedroom London flat. Like, the landlord was a bit iffy about a dog, so... Yeah. I don't know if an alligator would fly. But also, I wouldn't a bit, have a bit a... rude to call your girlfriend a dog there, but... <laughs> 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 uh, the is like you can come but nah she fucking <laughs> also what's the difference between an alligator and a crocodile because up until fuck knows up until a few years ago I swore an alligator was just a gay crocodile it's a gay crocodile yeah, yeah. that was my only explanation do you think he's it? shagging the croc <laughs> <laughs> uh, mate talk about toothy blowy from a croc <laughs> It's all teeth. You barely get maybe a hint of gum. You barely get anywhere with that. I can't imagine that being a pleasant experience. You would have for, to just, for anyone, really. Yeah, you just have to use like the nostril or something. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> anyway, the lack of a permit, uh, the access given to visitors, and the alligator's health caused the DEC to remove Albert in the interest of public safety and uh, the health, safety, and protection of the alligator. Access given to visitors, mate. If you've got a seven hundred and fifty put. For monster, I'm not coming round for dinner. Yeah. No fucking way. <laughs> I'm staying away from your. Even gaff. I have some friends that just have really fucking annoying dogs. Yeah, and that puts me off. Yeah, but if like I was trying to eat my dinner and I'm just like side eye, I had a fucking alligator. Really, <laughs> Do you think really he's distracting? Some people let their pets sort of sit at the table. <laughs> Do you they think say, he sits there like a person? They say never feed a dog at a table, but can you imagine this fucking alligator just looking up at you, looking a chip? What do alligators <laughs> even eat? I would assume humans. But not for this case. They're definitely meat, meaty guys, aren't yeah. they? Yeah. Oh, actually, I do know. You wouldn't want to be wafting through with a sausage roll. Nah, they would fucking go for you. Yeah. I went through like a sort of rabbit hole of watching TikToks every morning of this fella in Australia feeding like an army of crocodiles. And okay. he just reverses in with like a truck, tips it up, and it's just full of like raw meat. So, so that's what they're feasting on. Definitely carnivores. Yeah. Be tough to find a vegan alligator. <laughs> vegan alligator. <laughs> Caviero said in an online petition seeking to regain Albert that he was treated, quote, like a terrorist. <laughs> and, and he's talking about the crocodile there, as in they, they properly, like, cuffed the, cuffed the croc and, and <laughs> took him away in a van like a terrorist. Um, officers removed him and hauled him away in a truck. Caviero told a local TV station the revised regulations require him to buy insurance coverage and tape Albert's mouth shut whenever he's around people. The phrase bare minimum doesn't even cover it. <laughs> insurance. Yeah. Insurance and taping his mouth shut. That's all you need. Mm. I wouldn't <laughs> That's be going ridiculous. Anywhere. Yeah. That's fucking mental. I'd, I'd think an, I think an alligator's stronger than a bit of duct tape, to be honest. 
if it really wanted to free itself from that duct tape, it would be fucking. It would be yeah. out. And I, I think those. I don't think he can. He has a leg to stand on. Ironically, <laughs> like that other guy, that Chinese guy. <laughs> I don't think he has a leg to stand on to be upset about that. The regulations also require him to build a fence around the alligator's enclosure to prevent him from getting loose. Yeah, yeah, please. <laughs> Thank God. <coughs> the fact these regulations only came in a couple of years ago is mental. It is. Even, Was he having a swimming pool with nothing around it? Even like pet dogs need fucking like shock collars and stuff. Yeah. Of course an alligator needs a fence. You give a, you give a baby a gate just so it doesn't like sort of wander off. Mm. And, and this is an alligator. <laughs> yeah, I would love a fence. And ideally not like sort of just a mesh thing. Yeah, you need something. Fucking, I don't want a chain link. Definitely. You need something military grade to keep this fucker at bay. Mate, I, I want the Berlin Wall. <laughs> Ring fencing this thing. That wall in China you spoke of, get them brickies on the case. Oh, yeah, that wall in China that I can't remember the name of. Yeah. Really long, though, apparently. Yeah, so, um, Tony, if you're watching, uh, you're a cretin. You don't, um, you shouldn't be allowed to have an alligator. You're in the wrong, and it's time to move on. Just get a normal pet, mate. Your friends will, your friends are begging you. Next up, a veteran lobster diver was swallowed whole by a humpback whale. Cape Cod local and professional lobster diver Michael Packard entered the water on Friday for his second dive of the day. In full scuba, de- scuba gear, he was scouring the ocean floor for lobsters before a truly biblical experience. He was swallowed whole from behind by a whale. How is that fucking biblical? It's just terrifying. I think... <sighs> Is there anything in the Bible that references getting ate by a wheel? Yeah, now you bring it up because I wrote that. Um, I think it's 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 more biblical in the general sense of the term, is in that it's it's pretty miraculous. Yeah, the fact that he survived. Like if I read that in the Bible, I'd be that's one of those things that I'd be like, that's bullshit. <laughs> yeah. It's like when that woman gets turned to a block of salt. I'm like, yeah. no fucking way. And like, all due respect, we're going back to the Catholic Church here. Yeah. Respect my upbringing and all, but <laughs> Mary wasn't a fucking virgin. Mary was shagging. Yeah. Mary's one of the biggest bullshitters. Yeah. I wouldn't trust Mary. She was definitely just cheating on Joseph, and then she's like, oh, it was a miraculous birth. I didn't get dicked down at the fucking stables. You know what I think Jesus is lying about? Hmm. Bread and fish, mate. No way you can feed 10,000 people with two loaves and yeah, five It's pig. like fucking six pound for fish and chip over here. Mate, fish finger sandwich. Jesus would have been skint. Feeds, feeds like one person. Hmm. I th- I reckon that was bollocks, but I don't know which way round he's lying. Did he have way more food or way less people? We'll never know. Yeah, it's probably like he, he probably. Just, I reckon he hyped up like the attendance numbers. Yeah, to try he and just get had a few support. friends around. <laughs> yeah, he he's like he basically like he's sort of buying followers. Really, that's what he's doing. He's doing one of those services. Mm. You can get fake followers, and they had all brought food from home. <laughs> <laughs> one of them like bring your own beer parties. Yeah, bring your B O B Y O B. Bring your own bread. <laughs> 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 yeah. also can i just say lobster diver that was a new job for me i hadn't heard of that before and what he literally does it's very literal he gets in his scuba stuff he goes down to the ocean bed and literally just picks lobsters off the off the floor that's literally what he does does he have a bucket or a bag for these lobsters or can only do like two at a time yeah i don't know the full equipment yeah i want a fishing net at least you need something. Yeah. I have very little sympathy for any ocean-related injuries because <laughs> we are what? just we are not meant to be there. Like we okay. operate better on land. The ocean yeah. is a fucking scary place. So you like, think people who go in it are idiots? I think like there's a bit in the article that his sister says uh, that he often encountered great white sharks whenever he was out that far. Yeah, it's if sort you, of, you're asking for yeah, it. If you have if you brush a great white shark and continue to go back out, that's your own fault. Like, yeah. if you get fucking at by that, I don't have any sympathy for you. So, Michael Packard, if you're, if you're listening, you deserve to die. <laughs> it's basically what Aiden said there. Yeah, so, he said, I could sense I was moving, and I could feel the whale squeezing with the muscles in his mouth. Initially, Packard thought he was inside a great white shark, but he couldn't feel any teeth, and he hadn't suffered any obvious wounds. He struggled around, kicking the inside of the whale's mouth with this with his scuba gear, uh, he could tell the whale was a bit miffed when it started throwing its head from side to side. It surfaced and Packard was free to go. He later stated in an interview, I want to apologise to the whale. 
Mate, I'll be honest. I think this is on the whale. I'd be fuming at the whale. Of yeah, any apology. I don't think you've got anything to be sorry for. I think this is one hundred percent definitively yeah. the whale's fault. He just went for a dip in the deep end and ended up in a fucking whale's mouth. That is not his fault at all. The w- yeah. If that did happen to me, I would definitely be telling people that it like blew me out of the blowhole instead of just spat me back out. That's a much. I think they would start to not believe you. Really, yeah. I'm not sure of the exact diameter of a blowhole, but I imagine it's a bit more than you. Whales are a bit pretty less, big. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, whales are big, but. I feel like the blowhole, the sort of projection you get, like the trajectory of the ejaculation of seawater, if that's the right term. <laughs> like it is a, it's just it a big spray, isn't it? And I feel like, from what I know about hoses, if you want one of those, you've got to hold your finger over the yeah, end. Yeah, so I can only pressure. imagine it's, it's a very small sort of. If you're if you're watching there, probably about that big. I would. That's my guess. Yeah. So if you're an oceanographer, write in and let let me know how accurate that is. Yeah, you got me there. To be fair, I, <laughs> I probably can't exit via the because it the goes blowhole. very sort of high. Though. Yeah, there need to be a lot of pressure. And again, that fucking whenever you're trying to like soak your brothers or something, and you put the the thumb as over you it, do. Yeah, you never have like water fights. In whenever you try to soak your brothers, <laughs> <laughs> I think the the whale might have one potential excuse here. I think the whale is 100% at fault, but maybe he can claim it was an accident uh, because the director of humpback whale studies at the Centre for Coastal Studies in Princeton said it must have been a mistake on the part of the whale. They often trawl the seabed looking for sand lants, which is something that they eat. And its mouth is so big that when it opens its mouth, when it unhinges its jaw, uh, it blocks its forward vision. Ah. So he'll... he'll... So maybe he spotted a sand lance. Yeah. He's gone in for it. He's sort of opened his mouth wide. Packard's come in the way and he just sort of gobbled him up. So that's the whale's alibi. To be fair, it's a strong one. I think that's rock solid. Yeah. yeah. He might have a defence here, but I still can't. don't think that Mikey's got anything to be sorry about. Maybe the, the whale and the alligator can hire the same lawyer. <laughs> There's a guy. Yeah. Bi- a big animals man. He gets the animals off. Still absolutely. The two mental animal stories, but the fact that the fucker before was going to hire a lawyer to get his alligator back and <laughs> yeah. now some fucker's getting swallowed by a whale. <laughs> Incredibly, the same bloke also survived a plane crash in Costa Rica 20 years ago. During another fishing trip. Mm. Three people on board were killed, including both pilots, but he did manage to survive. And I think now that's two sort of fishing adjacent incidents. Yeah. How many times does this sort of thing have to happen before you call it a day? He's had his warning shots at this stage. Yeah. Like, I feel like if I was swallowed by a whale, I would just wouldn't do fishing anymore. We're going back to that point you made about not having no sympathy for ocean people. Like after a plane crash and being swallowed by a yeah. whale, I'd definitely be giving it up. I think it's time to find a new hobby. I'd quit when you're ahead, Mick. That's fucking taking the piss. It's like It's like Theo Baker. There's nothing he loves more than football. And yet every time he plays it, he is consistently injured by the sport that he loves. It comes back to bite him every time, and yet he insists and continues to do rehab every single time to try and restore his withering body to a semblance of relative athleticism. I didn't see where you were going with that at all whenever you were comparing Theo Baker to this humpback whale story. It's not it's the a, best analogy. It is. It's a good comparison now that you, you explain think? it. Um I, he just has a fucking hip made of glass, which I feel for him because exactly he keeps going back. He keeps asking for it, yeah. and one of these days, uh, Michael Packard is going to end up. What's going to happen? On pitch side, <laughs> <laughs> he's gonna he's gonna end up. I don't know, getting sort of Steve Irwin. You know, yeah. I feel like you you have that many interactions with animals. Yeah, rest in peace, but. It's like Steve Irwin was sort of asking for it as well. Like you spend your whole life around dangerous animals, some shit's gonna happen. I over lockdown, I binge watched every single episode of that at like four a.m. in the morning, like every night on YouTube. Yeah, and there was a clip where I think it was like a, a Komodo dragon, yeah. and it bit him in the foot and literally bit through his boot. His the blood was pissing out of it. Yeah, and he started apologizing to the dragon because it broke his tooth. Okay, That's, once once again, there's there's a problem going on here, guys. Yeah. It's not your fault. <laughs> You gotta put it on the dragon yeah. there. You've gotta wait for him to apologize to you if you really want to get through it. Yeah. And maybe avoid stingrays and whatnot. 
Yeah. Don't touch up a stingray. That's just a that's just general advice for anyone. <laughs> because it turns out that they can be lethal. Yeah. And rest in peace to Steve Irwin. Now, uh, just moving smoothly on to our next story. A Canadian janitor has been sentenced to prison for six months after asking university students to hit him in the nuts. Classic stuff here. The caretaker of a student building in Sherbrooke, Quebec, has been sent down over allegations of indecent requests for cock and ball torture. As the janitor and trusted custodian of the building, he had the phone numbers of every person. He selected specific victims, no surprises here, all women, and sent them a risky text offering $100 to hit him in the genitals for 30 minutes. What's That's that? That's a long time. Is that like 80, 75, 80 quid or something? Yeah, I was going to look up the exchange rate because that's, um, that's a lot for 30 minutes. That's I, a good hourly rate, that yeah, is. I honestly think, though, that the students are a bit ungrateful. <laughs> like, if if you were like truly living the skint uni experience, yeah. you would bite someone's hand off for this financial opportunity. Yeah. They're definitely first years. If you asked like, the same people in between loans in third year of uni to do this, they would be getting the steel toe boots on, ready to fucking kick. Yeah. They're ready to pop some screws in. 100%. <laughs> Do you think this is actually quite sort of a a generous money-making offer and the students that he selected um, should be thankful, accept this opportunity and make some income on the side whilst yeah. also continuing their studies? Absolutely. <laughs> Genuinely believe that. I'd have no problem kicking someone in the balls for 80 quid if it was like a single isolated kick it's just the length of time like doing it for a half hour straight i, I don't think i, have I the feel like that's gonna that. start to hurt my foot yeah <laughs> also i don't want i don't want him to not get his money's worth i would probably feel bad so if i wasn't delivering like a good kick per minute ratio and he was disappointed in the service even though it yeah. is absolutely depraved i would probably still think like ah oh, i'll just take 40 <laughs> <laughs> i i think i i think there's a there's a problem with this sort of kink like i think you start off and maybe, you know, someone slaps you in the face while you're having sex. Yeah. That's how this starts. And it, as usual, sort of slippery slope situation. Once the picks up steam, it starts going. And eventually you want 30 minutes of hardcore um, <laughs> ball kicking. Probably like, I'm, I'm just imagining like a sort of studs up Brexit tackle to the nuts. Uh, like, oh. It must be, I'm assuming though that that is how you discover this fetish. Like, if you're playing football, the ball hits you. Like, it is <sighs> agonizing. It happened to me yesterday in the fucking office with that map prick. Yeah. I just headed it down and it caught me right in the stones and I was out of action for about 10 minutes. So, this But fucker, you kind of liked it. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to be like this. Now I'm 80 quid down. <laughs> yeah. No, nah, but. Br- prowling around like the University of Reading campus. <laughs> <laughs> well, here, by the way, six months for this. Yeah. All he done was not get kicked in the balls. <laughs> He's getting six months. <laughs> you think it's unjust? Yeah. Well, his defense have proposed a sentence of one day. They said, we'll admit to the guilt here, but we want a day in prison. There's Which, also- that's, that's just a day off, mate. Yeah. Honestly, that's, that's, that's better. That's yeah. fine. I'd, I'd voluntarily go to prison for a day. Hit the gym. Yeah. Yeah. I, I feel like as well. Have some that- scram. <laughs> some noodles. The gym is probably, or sorry, the gym. The prison is probably his ideal location because there's definitely a few other people that would be into this. Oh, hundred percent. Would happily kick him in the balls, be kicked in the balls. He'd be, he'd be, um, like sort of letting the bar of slope slip out of the hands quite easily, <laughs> suspiciously easily, yeah. I reckon, around the showers. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, very risky text. Yeah, very risky text. I, my heart races a bit. On hinge sometimes when you send something that's a bit fruity. Yeah. And this is this is above and beyond. Specifically requesting cock and ball torture. On a people, first text. On a first text. <laughs> I'm going to say, it's, it's definitely out there. It's the sort of strategy where you won't get a lot of responses, but the ones who do respond are probably keepers. Mm. They're probably the ones for you. Yeah. He also uh, apologised to the victims after his conviction, which is the most Canadian thing ever. <laughs> That's just what they do. At least it shows remorse, though. A lot of like people, whenever they get sentenced, they're described as like sociopaths, psychopaths, yeah, or whatever, yeah. because they're just not remorseful this guy seems at all. Chill. Yeah, yeah. We should get him on. <laughs> yeah. So, um, mate, unnamed janitor in Sherbrooke, if you want to come on, we've got a chair open, and we'd love to talk to you about your life, your kinks, this case. 
See if you were to... I mean, he won't be available for about six months. Yeah, we can book him in for, like, autumn. Yeah. If you were in a position where someone was like, look, Rufus, you really badly need 80 pound or else everything's going under. You're like, it's a hostage situation with your family. Yeah. And you have to kick this man in the balls oh. repeatedly for a half hour. In- and I, I, I know you'd do it, but, you know, like, in between, whenever you're trying to get your breath back and stuff, what do you reckon the small talk would be like? He's just sat there laying down, cock out. Well... Canadians, from what I know of Canadians, they only have a few topics of combo. Maple it's, syrup. It's sort of like hockey and donuts, mostly. Yeah. So we probably, and I like hockey, so we probably just talk about that for a bit mm-hmm. until it's sort of the swelling had died down on his shaft and, shaft and balls, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. You'd be able to navigate it well then, you reckon? I give him a proper like Nigel De Jong, Jabby Alonso like ninja <laughs> kick. I'd go Bruce Lee on it. Like I, I wouldn't be taking any shit. You know, at the end of Casino Royale where he gets tortured, <laughs> you'd be going for that. Oh, this guy's balls are gonna get it. Like I'm not sure he's gonna be the same <laughs> after this. <laughs> Do you think you would go for like a pair of like fucking Adidas Predators, or you'd go for like the shoes you're wearing now, where there's sort of a point to them, or like a pair of steel toe boots? I, you know those girls' ballet shoes yeah. that they squeeze into with a pointy, pointy end? But yeah. then it's all foot. You're more or less just kicking. Oh, out. yeah, there's not enough welly on it. Yeah. Maybe a welly. Yeah, welly would be good. Welly would be good. A it's steel toe welly. Got some heft. Yeah. yeah. Or some, yeah, some like miners' boots or something like that. Yeah. You don't want anything like the, the ballerina shoe. There's a lot of contact with your skin. And I personally don't want that's that. That's true. Socks yeah. on for sure. Yeah. Socks on for sure with this one. The moral of this episode is just keep your socks on. Yeah. Right, we move on to our next segment now, Snatch of the Day. This is all the sports news, and today we're covering the Ugandan Soft Ground Wrestling promotion, which, unsurprisingly, is a wrestling promotion played on soft ground in Uganda. It's always looking for upstart fighters to compete in the league. Something that sets it apart from other wrestling promotions is that it's always played on mud. We're going to watch a short clip now, just so you can get a sort of idea of what goes on in this league. Let's hit the tape. <laughs> Mate, it gets funnier every time. The forum's actually very impressive. Right, can we can we can we run that back? I'd love to I'd love to watch it again. You can indeed. Mate, the commitment to this. <laughs> oh my he's God. just his body is just lifeless laying there. Just kill the man. It's just a bit of baler twine and a bit of scrap wood. That's the ring, but they're making it work. Yeah, I don't think the budget is huge. It's not. It's not Floyd Mayweather, there, is it? Nah. This is also really impressive. <laughs> that is like the prime. Bit. That is prime Chris Benoit levels of high flying. Also, good to see them being progressive and having a woman as the referee. Yeah, that's true. It is a pity about him doing all his finishers on his wife and son, though. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Also, ground, not very soft. <laughs> it doesn't look soft at all. <laughs> it's, it's, it's absolutely rock hard, mate. They've got the wrong name for this thing. This is Ugandan concrete wrestling. This move is just awesome. Love the scream. The form is beautiful. It's a perfect belly flop. Unbelievable stuff. That must have genuinely really hurt. You would imagine so, yeah. <laughs> so that's the sort of thing they get up to. And I have to say, I'm thoroughly enjoying everything that's coming out this season. I think this might be the best season of sport this year. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's better than the Premier League title. It's been unreal, genuinely. Uh, The league is run by this absolute nutter called Lord White. Uh, I don't know any relation to Dana White at all from (laughs) UFC. Maybe a second cousin or something? Could be. In the latest video that they put out, the the SGW, uh, big, Big Bad Lord White, he addressed a crowd and insulted them by calling them stupid. He said he would give them a condensed version of the presentation about the history of wrestling that he prepared. The crowd continued to boo him as he delivered the presentation. Uh, he was said during this presentation, he was surrounded by Ugandans and said they were invented by the British, which drew more boos. He called it an awful country and noted that the British gave Uganda their independence because they did not want it anymore. And we're going to see that play out as he addresses the crowd here. And you can really get a sense of the sort of character that Lord White is. Yeah. Even the stunts. I mean, straight away, first thing I'm noticing, 
The short man syndrome is unreal. He is five foot five at a push. He is minuscule and he is angry. He is the least threatening looking person I've ever seen though. The main danger facing off against him would be getting your eye put out by a snout. He looks like the sort of b bloke that would come into school and like sit in the back and open a gaming laptop that's like the loudest piece of machinery <laughs> ever constructed. He looks like a fucking resident of Whoville. <laughs> yeah, he does. What the fuck? This woman's shaking her ass. <laughs> <laughs> this is Ugandan hey, muck wrestling. It's not a Cardi B music video. I mean, to be fair, she's got the ingredients for the recipe. That is, she's seriously thick. <laughs> that woman is serious cake. She's packing enough for the whole class there. You know, you ever think back to, you know, like that one weird autistic lad in your class? You ever think, like, what are they up to now? This is it. This is the guy. They've emigrated to Uganda and are fucking... So he's delivering a speech to a bunch of Ugandans about how Uganda is a British colony and he owns the wrestling league and they all work for him. And then I believe at the end he recites the national anthem. He does, he tries it. This yeah. is where it gets a bit tasty though. This is where he actually sort of has a... The a... crowd properly gets angry. With yeah. Him. The editing is fucking mental. <laughs> Man, they should hire whoever did this for the fellas. Yeah. That's a, a, a bang improvement. up job. Subtitling as well. He's, he, he literally has all the skills. <laughs> Jump cut and subtitle. This fucker in the background has been lining up the RKO for about five minutes. Oh, that is vicious. I mean, the form is unbelievable. I love, love the high that. quality frame rate of the, the action slow motion replay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yes. See, honestly, they're loving it. If anyone from the WWE happens to be watching, please donate for for the love of Uganda kneecaps. Please donate them an actual ring. Yeah, maybe a mat to wrestle on, because God. What is he doing? <laughs> <laughs> What's funny is he he's clearly written this absolutely batshit script for this. Yeah, he's told a bunch of random Ugandans to turn up. They obviously don't understand a word of it. <laughs> <laughs> and it, then he's instructed them to sort of do some extremely poorly acted fake wrestling moves on him and push him into a bush at the it, end. It's just, this is just the fucking Fiverr headquarters. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. These are those blokes that wish you a happy birthday. Yeah. With he's the just hired them and yeah. give them a fucking shitty wrestling script and... He's given them a Fiverr. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, this is absolutely batshit insane, and I'm concerned there's sort of some, like, horrendous overtones of colonialism in this. There is, yeah. And I feel like he's sort of a sad man trying to recapture for a glory of, former glory of an empire he didn't live in. Yeah. It's a bit like, sort of, when the Spice Girls reunite <laughs> for a tour because they all need some money, but it's not yeah. quite the same because... Firstly, Posh isn't there because she doesn't need the money and the rest of them sort of getting on a bit mm. and they don't quite have the same enthusiasm as before. And one of them is Christian Horner's wife. I have no idea who that is, to be honest. Okay. Um, one of the Spice Girls is Christian Horner's wife. There's the explanation there. You don't know who Christian Horner is? No. Nope. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a bit like that. As in, I'm not sure you can ever recapture what was going on back then. I'm not sure you would ever want to as well, because there were lots of sort of war crimes, <laughs> it, it horrendous racism, etc. Yeah. The upshot of this video is he vows never to return to Uganda after facing such a savage beating. I mean, he really got bloodied there. I can't blame him, especially getting speared under the fucking rushes. I just wonder the sort of path this guy's life led down, which caused him to not only move to Uganda, which I can only assume is part of some kind of Mental health crisis. <laughs> you reckon but, he's like a cult hero out there? Or do people just hate him as they do in the video? I, well, I guess there's something to be said for the fact he's providing employment of some sort to some people. Which, I guess, isn't... I'm trying to decide if this is a net positive overall. Probably not. I'm really, I'm really is. having a hard time sort of landing on that side of the equation. If it is uh, a favor job like we expect, there's maybe max twenty people there, so he's out what like a hundred quid. So it's not as if he's doing <laughs> a lot for the Ugandan economy. Econ the Ugandan economy. 
Economy. <laughs> economy. Yeah, third time's the charm. Yeah, I mean, he's not exactly... He's not, you know, the mines in, in Wales, you know. He's not providing employment for everyone in the village, is he? Yeah. And no. also, I feel like some people are getting hurt doing this. I feel like there's some liability insurance that he's not paying as well. Mm. So um, maybe we should start a campaign. I've actually turned against this very quickly now. <laughs> Let's start a, a petition. We're going to end the Ugandan Soft Ground Wrestling League or... We buy the Ugandan Soft Ground Wrestling League, yeah, and wind it down, maybe. But that that does involve putting money in this guy's pocket, which I'm not thrilled about. I feel like as well, if we're going to start like a a petition, we need to like really up our white female demographic because they fucking love signing them. They do love petitions. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Maybe we'll say you sign a petition, and then you get to go to Uganda and have a picture with with them, because you can put that on your Instagram. Yeah. And, I mean, you look you look great. There are so many people. You know, in my Princess school. Diana. <laughs> <laughs> there are so many people in my school that there was like a maybe like a school trip that they'd done through like the the local chapel that took them out to I think it was Zambia. Yeah. And they all had like photos of like we starving African babies holding them, and they're yeah. there they're there for a weekend and yeah, still yeah. their Facebook profile pictures. Yeah. You fucking abandoned those babies. It's, it's crazy. I'm really against that sort of stuff. Yeah. Sort of virtue signaling. It really like, is. They cut. They come back after building one house yeah. in Africa, which that's gonna solve the problem. It's just a fucking. They're like raw. Africa is so dusty. Well, there's probably more girls that I went to school with. Yeah. Yeah. It, but then I'm like, oh. Africa is, is so like so dirty, like pretty stinky. Africa, like that's what the guys are supposed yeah, to be like. But their Facebook profile picture still oh, yeah. them nursing a wee a wee baby. Yeah, oh, they don't even have vapes. <laughs> There's no elf bars in Africa. That's not a real fact. But this this might before I need to preface this before I even say it. This might just instantly need cut. Well, the whole segment. No, just what I'm about to say. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> oh, this is gonna be good. I've always thought. Right, you know how <laughs> it's gonna be so bad. You know how you always see the advertisements where it's like young, whatever his name is, has to walk fifteen miles a day to get water. Yeah, it's not as if they're building like fucking two story houses. They're like huts made of muck and sticks. I can yeah. they not just build it closer to the well? Move house. Yeah, yeah. Or yeah, or buy a car. <laughs> those those are options, I guess. Yeah. We've given you two two choices. So, um, yeah, let us know how that goes. Now, moving on to the weather segment, Drizzle Kicks coming at you now. And England has had one nice day. Yes. Big news. One nice day. It's pretty nice. Now, our next segment, Dispatches from Grand. So last week, my grandma wrote into the show to tell us what life was like on uh, the, her side of the Berlin Wall. I mean, she didn't live in Berlin. But she, I guess she was on her side of it, really. Long long way from the wall <laughs> in London. But um, she told us what that era was like. And now she's bought us a present. Ooh. So thank you to my gran, who I can report is is still deaf. And I'm still um, not sure how she listens to this. <laughs> still can't work it out. But thank you. She said she's been enjoying the clips. Yeah. Thank you, gran. Um, this is what she sent in. My gran... Is a bit is she's she's a knitter. Mm-hmm. She is a big knitter, right? And one thing she loves to do is knit, specifically ties <laughs> from the sixties. So these are era era specific ties. This Beautiful. is what people were wearing back in the day. Can I have a feel? So do you want you want burgundy? I reckon yeah, that would suit you. I go burgundy. Yeah. I have to say, extremely itchy. But I feel like all clothes were back then. Yeah, it's got it's kind of got that charm to it, though. The yeah, itch. that charm. We we try them on. So she's also sent in. This is an advert from the era, so you can get the sense of what was oh, sort shit. of going on. Yeah. And these used to cost one shilling. What is the conversion rate now of a shilling? What would it be worth? It's really price? hard because okay, a shilling is a there's. 20 shillings in a pound. So one shilling is 5p. Right. But because of inflation, 5p, and it was the old system as well. We worked it out. It's sort of 89p for one of these bad boys in modern money. Right. Um, but so that's the sort of thing you would wear to work. I'm actually going to put mine on, I think. Yeah, we'll give it a try. It's very long. 
Very long. Have to say, very long. Um, there's two sort of, you know, normally in a tie, there's a long bit and a short bit. Yeah. There's just two long bits. It's very time. even, yeah. 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 I don't know which is which. Oh, this is a thinner. One bit's a bit fatter. Yeah. Have to say, I think this might be the only podcast ever where two people have changed their tie on the show. Yeah. But yeah, you'll find it's certainly insulating as well. You'll find your neck gets hot. Yeah. I've kind of got some sort of half ass job. Oh, mate, that Did looks you? good. Wow, that seats you, you know. You know what? It doesn't look out of place. The viewer wouldn't know that. I'm itching like fuck. Mate, that's that's classy. Yeah. I feel, I feel like a gangster. It looks unreal, especially in the camera. Grand's done a grand's done a job. Look at yours. Yeah. Yours looks great as well. Wow. I feel like if I took this off though, I would just look like Shaun of the Dead. Yeah, you do have a bit of that look going the, about you. The white shirt and the You look sort of like I mean you you look like a sort of thirty five year old man wearing the clothes of a fourteen year old schoolboy. And I I'll think that's it. a compliment. Yeah. Man, I like I like this. I look like DB Cooper, bro. I look like I'm about to hijack a plane. This is fucking cool. Oh, Grand's Grand's been dripping us out, man. Oh yeah. That's the look. Love that. Beautiful. I'm gonna do our next segment like this. So thank you, Grand, for the ties. Very stylish. Looking good. Enjoying it. A lot. Now, on to our games round, Gamey Schumer, where we play things I've usually just invented. And we hit a big milestone for us, 10,000 subscribers on YouTube. So thank you for that. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share, hit the bell, tell your friends, and put it on the notice board. Um, we promise to play another round of Sodium Carousel when we hit 10k. Uh, so we're going to play another round of Sodium Carousel. Here we go. Categories. I was thinking, Premier, like vintage Premier League footballers. Okay, another football race one. I'm up for that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's good. That's good with me. But they have to be specifically vintage. Yeah. I think no current players. No, nothing post 2010. Oh, that's gonna be hard. I know. Well, like their career kind of dipped into the 2010s, but I'm not. Man, I'm not sure I can even. 2000s fucking Premier League footballers. <sighs> I was I was barely watching it, man. Yeah. Well, any names that spring to mind then. I'll see. I'll see what I can do. I, I'm. I'm just going for sort of like bang average footballers. Yeah. Like no good players. <sighs> <laughs> well, we'll see what we. I'm can. just going to name the full man today. We, we can see what we can do. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Right. Is that enough water for sodium carousel? Doesn't feel like <laughs> it. But here we go for round two of sodium carousel. As traditional, I will begin. Stephen Ireland. Quality player on his day. <laughs> uh, fuck shit, one's not going to mind. Charles and Zogbia. Dirk Cow. David Engog. <laughs> oh. Vladimir Smitsa. <clears throat> Gabriel Abanglahor. Aaron Dyer. Oh, fuck. Richard Dunn. Lord Wright Phillips. Lord Wright Phillips. <laughs> Bradley Wright Phillips. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, that's so much worse this time. <laughs> and I lose again. Although it was close. I was just waiting to see you go and then I was right behind you. Again though, as always, we're ready Rufus. It never really feels like there's a winner. No, you know what that was? That was a totally joyless experience. At least the first time, it was funny. <laughs> yeah, it was new. It was new, and now, now, <laughs> I've just, seen it all before. Yeah. That's just... But if we hit 12,000 subscribers... No, we're not. 
Oh, it's just painful. That's such a bad game. <laughs> We'd have to hit a really big milestone to play that again. Yeah. I hate Sodium Carrot. I thought it was so funny the first time around. Yeah. Now, it just seems kind of fucked I've up. I've seen the horrors of war. I'm not going back for another tour of Afghanistan. No way. We need a we need a spit break. Oh, major spit break, and then we'll be back with the next segment. Now, moving on to our very helpful consumer advice segment. This is Out of Packet, and that name is not a thinly veiled reference to some certain substance. As usual, my producer Aiden has ordered a product from the Argos catalogue, and I shall review it. Now, what have you brought me this week? Okay, so I'll start by saying I know that you've recently become somewhat of a national hero in North Korea, especially after your flawless rendition of their national anthem, which was your first take of it, wasn't it? First take, first go. Yeah. yeah. Nailed it. I also know that you've been quoted in the past saying, Kim Jong-un is a bit of a hero of mine. Fucking love that guy. He's just very misunderstood. So That's a that's a real quote of, from yeah, me, is it? Yeah. In what, in what context did I say that quote? You just said it in the pub a few weeks ago. Okay. Um... Keep in mind as well that this item is sold across... I back it. <laughs> I back it. <laughs> <laughs> so the item sold out across all of Pyongyang. So you're one of the lucky people who managed to get one. Oh, this is, this is just unbelievable. So here we've got the highly coveted and best-selling Kim Jong-un 2024 calendar. Uh, as you can see, the cheeky chappy himself, Kinky Kim, on the front uh, with a very much edited tongue sticking out there. Very clearly edited that because that is the tongue of a white man. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell yeah. from the um, from the lack of scraping of the tongue there. You can just tell from the hygiene that this man drinks a lot of Monster. Uh, and I'm going to enjoy looking through some of these images. Yeah. So... He's looking very solemn there. I have to say, rough jawline on this guy. <laughs> it's, it's non-existent. He could do with a mew, I reckon. <laughs> Kim Jong, look, I know you get a bit upset when people sort of go against you, but I reckon a little bit of mewing, and you might be able to turn that into a decent mug. Uh, or wear a mask like that guy to cover it up. Or grow a beard, maybe. Maybe that's beyond, I feel like that's beyond his capabilities. Mm. Then we've got Lover Kim. With the rose. Valentine's Absolutely. Day special for Valentine's February. Valentine's Day special. Oh, mate, imagine like being a woman and then opening your eyes during lovemaking and it's Jong-un. <laughs> Sweaty Jong-un. Just having the supreme leader fucking Asian hovering over Michael you. Michael McIntyre. <laughs> <laughs> as you know. As you know. Oh, that's got to be rough. But I, I feel like I'd rather... It's- He's a, he's a hard bloke to say no to in Pyongyang. <laughs> <laughs> let's be real. You don't want really to have a say. <laughs> let's be real. <laughs> I feel like you 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 uh you say no to Jong Un and you might find yourself strapped to one of those missiles. I do feel like I would rather spend the evening with Kim Jong Un than Michael McIntyre, though. <laughs> <laughs> uh, March. This is the uh, the the month of my birth. Yeah. So also a very a slightly late birthday present. It was Rufus's birthday yesterday. So it was happy birthday. Twenty two years of age, and it's the first birthday where you wish you were the age you were before. Mm, you're always, all the other ones. You're happy to be you're shooting there. for the stars. Yeah. Whereas now, I'd rather be twenty one than twenty two. Mm. It's a shame, but uh, here we are. As you can see, Jong Un celebrating it in style. I thought that was all beer at the back there, but it's actually just um, sort of peanut butter. Which makes sense considering his build. <laughs> this guy loves PB. <laughs> April, we've got gay Kim Jong Un in <laughs> Princess Peach's bedroom. <laughs> my sister, my sister when she was younger, would have killed for a room like this. Yeah, I guess he he did. <laughs> he oh, now this it. is the best one so far. Yeah. Jong Un on the decks. That was actually a few months back. Whenever he was supporting Vicstar in a club in Shoreditch. Oh, yeah. I remember we, that. We I thought that. it was weird that he was the support act there. Yeah. Because he usually, he usually he's the main man, and I, I imagine he's got a bit more sway than Vicstar. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. You were there at that night. You played some bangers? Yeah, there was a lot of very, very uplifting songs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, really positive positive stuff. <laughs> he's like the, the uh, Korean Fred again, isn't he? <laughs> I love it when Fred again goes... It's like he really cares. Yeah. A lot of passion behind those keys. Yeah. 
Usually, <laughs> Kit Chong Un goes like this, but he's just sort of typing in the nuclear code. <laughs> <laughs> Next up, we've got Happy Jong Un. Uh, he appears to be delivering a uh, or being deposed or something like that in yeah. Parliament. I imagine they don't question him too harshly. I love Flays in North Korea. Happy Jong Un again. Very happy gay. Yeah, and there's no reason not to be. I think his citizens maybe can't say the if same. If I was in his position, I'd be thrilled. Yeah. <laughs> I'd be having a great time. It would just be like an endless gap year. Do you remember when he just disappeared for a while over COVID and everyone thought he was dead? Yeah, man. Well, clearly not because he was just shooting this calendar. Yeah, that's where he was. <laughs> he was in the stew. <laughs> I'm still waiting for the uh, for the nude shot at the back here. I'm hoping for a surprise in December. A little Christmas present. I will you. say this December is the highlight, but it's not because okay. he's nude. Right. Agricultural Kim Jong Un just uh, getting getting to grips with the fundamentals of his economy there. <laughs> Naval Kim Jong Un. He definitely can't swim. He looks. This is the only one in which he's angry, or he's 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 worried because yeah. I reckon he sinks like a stone in water. He heard our story about the wheel. <laughs> They're looking for it. <laughs> okay, Kim Jong Un holding a fish. He found it. Found it. <laughs> There's the whale. Looks fucking tiny next yeah, to him, though. He's fucking huge. He is wham. <laughs> Mate, also, like, if you asked for a fade and you got that, oh, you'd be fuming with that. Yeah, that is a Turkish barber special. Yeah. that. <laughs> I once had a barber. I went for a trim. New barber. And his eyes were sort of looking different directions. <laughs> And I was like, look, I know you can still see, yeah. but it's not a great start. Nah, I feel like for the application process for being a barber, you need to at least not be cockeyed. Yeah. That was one of the worst trims I've ever had. Yeah. It was actually relatively similar to this one. I got a haircut whenever I first moved over here. Yeah. And it was, I said, like, just like a mid skin fade, not too high. Yeah. He left me with not a single hair on the side of my head. <laughs> and then I went back two weeks later for another haircut with the same the same yeah. man. And he was like, who cut your hair? This he was like and insulting was the, the haircut. <laughs> it was him. <laughs> Wait, well, it's good to know that he's moved to Pyongyang. <laughs> he's delivering dead trims out yeah. there as well. Hackney to Pyongyang is an often tra- or trodden path. Oh, and this is a beautiful symbol of friendship. Yeah. Trump, Jong-un, holding hands. Mistletoe, flags. This, I, what a way to end the year. I hope one day we're in a position of prestige to recreate a photo like that. Yeah. I've been to the hotel where they met. Uh-huh. So they, they met in Singapore. And it was, this was in 2018. When they shook hands and they said, let's get rid of the nukes. And then they did fuck all. Um, We had an event there the week after. Uh-huh. Not quite as much press, I'll be honest. I don't know where they went. But we had our junior prom. At that hotel afterwards, yeah. and I was, I was just hoping he'd sort of still be kicking her out. Maybe go to the casino or something. Mm. Seems like a degenerate gambler, Jong Un. Yeah, yeah. But um, no, lovely present. I'm glad this is an official Kim Jong calendar. So any purchases are will be supporting the regime. How much is this? It was actually fourteen pound. I think that's a steal. I think that's an absolute steal. 14 quid for your for a whole year of Jong Un. I don't think you can be upset about that. Highly highly recommend. I actually love this calendar so much. I think we could use it in our studio. I might just pop it somewhere, just hang it up. It will fit in with the theme as well, which will be nice. <laughs> it's era era relevant. I mean, in in terms of sort of economy and technology, it is pretty era relevant. They have very much a backwater. Um, yeah, let's just wipe it up there. Oh! Phone's ringing. Something's coming in. Hello? Big news. Big news today. It's Martin. Martin, hello. Yes. Wow. Wow. Okay. Thank you. Well, I've just had something big come in down the line from our Cuban correspondent, Martin Osigard. This is today's news. Today, of course, being the 17th of April, 1961. Two boats, each with a flotilla, 
and an underwater demolition team of five frogmen entered the Bay of Pigs in the early hours of this morning. Some boats were damaged because of coral, uh, but it was established that the US military has invaded Cuba. There's been a military landing in Cuba. Some boats damaged because they believed it was seaweed, but it was actually coral reef they were landing on. But nonetheless, troops have made it to the beach. Big news here. Huge news. Two boats, two flotillas, each with five frogmen for a total of ten frogmen. It's in, a lot of frogmen. In the Bay of Pigs, yeah. And I'm not sure what a flotilla is either. That sounds like a bit of Mexican cuisine. I'm also not sure what a frogman is. Yeah. And I don't know where the Bay of Pigs is either. <laughs> so there's very, really very little information being given here by Martin, who, has, I have to say, is one of the shitter reporters that we have around the world. Yeah, He's um, doing work experience, so whether he stays or not is kind of... Up I have to say, air. this this sounds it is a tasty story though. Flotilla, that sounds delicious. I'd love mm. a flotilla. And Bay of Pigs, love a little little B- BBQ port. Yeah, bacon it's the sandwich. frogman that's really ruining it for me. Always the French getting involved <laughs> in this sort of shit. Anyway, Fidel Castro has put out a statement saying that the invaders are all members of the exiled Cuban Revolutionary Front. And they've come to destroy the regime and take away the freedoms and rights of men. At around 11 this morning, there was an aerial scuffle. So it's not just a land offensive now. And a US Fart 33 was shot down. Sorry. A US Fart 33 shot down a a Cuban Foul B-26, which then crash landed in a field. Have to say, I think the United States, firstly, we can talk about the war in a second, but you've got to have a better naming system than that. Fart 33. That's just... Just, just not on. You know what I'm more intrigued about? The fact that it's the 33, 33rd fart. edition of the fart. Yeah. You think after one or two they would have realised. Yeah. But they <laughs> kept pumping them out. That's the military industrial complex, baby. <laughs> That's cr- This is crazy. And I have to say, I like a US win again here. Yeah. They've got, they, they're on a hot streak. They're in form, definitely. I don't know if you remember the results of World War One and World War Two. Yeah. Um, Let's forget about Korea. They're on. They're in pretty decent nick here. They really love a scrap. They love a scrap. Yeah. I think they're well up for it. And I'm sticking my money. I'm all in behind a US win. The Yanks really love a scrap as well. They do. They do. They still have that war going on with the Vietnamese as well. And they're looking really, really good in that. Yeah. I like them. They're shaping up nicely here. It's tough for them to because they've sort of had to put out the B team for this. Mm. While the, uh, the first team are out in Vietnam. It's tough. It's just a tough... When you've got a lot of away fixtures, it's tough with the scheduling and you need a lot of squad rotation. Yeah. So that is the concern here is that maybe they haven't put the best men for the job on this. Yeah. But nonetheless, it's Cuba, mate. They're crap. I can't remember the last time Cuba won anything. Yeah, they've never had a good team in like recent years anyway. Yeah. So I think easy money betting on a US win here. But it also is a little bit of a disaster for your mate and mine, JFK. Because I think... He wanted this to be secret. Yeah. From what Martin has told me, he wanted this to be secret, but they've immediately come out and said it's exiled Cubans mm. fighting with the Americans. He just showed his full hand to Castro in a piss poor attempt to overthrow his regime. Straight yeah. away, he was like, this is what I'm trying to do. Absolutely rubbish. I think this might be the worst thing that will happen to JFK during his presidency. Yeah, he hasn't had much luck recently, but I'm sure good fortunes are right around the corner for him. Anyway... With the betting lines, there are some I like, some side bets here. Obviously, we have the main result going all the way for a US win. But I think there is an outside chance of a nuke being dropped here. Yeah. I think there's a chance that the the Kremlin gets involved here. I'd like the Ruskies to hop on the back of this. I think maybe they take, they seize this as an opportunity. And they like, they're known for getting a bit hot-headed about stuff and making rash decisions. And they might just go, Dimitri, send the nukes. I could see in this situation, Soviet Union and Cuba getting on pretty well. Yeah, I there's definitely there's definitely money to be made there. I've got an acrobat, right? Kremlin makes a statement in the next two days. Nuke gets dropped yeah. at some point, but an overall US win. And I'm not sure which side is going to drop the nuke. It's a tough situation for sure. There's many, many tactics here and 
it's going to be interesting to see how this offensive progresses. I have to say, I'm pretty upset with the performance of that one guy in the Cuban plane losing to that American in the fart. <laughs> you know when blokes go, I could land a plane? Yeah. No instructions. No, no, you couldn't. I think this quite clearly shows... If you don't know what you're doing, you're going to die pretty soon. I remember trying to play the Black Ops 1 campaign with like inverted controls. Oh. And that was a fucking nightmare. Yeah. So I don't think I'd last long in a plane. I'd, I'd struggle getting it off the ground. Yeah. Let alone trying to shoot the thing and fly at the same time. With farts coming at you left, right and centre. Exactly. Um, This guy, he has crash landed, but he is okay. We'll say that. Although you might not want him on the team next time. He's crap. He's definitely getting dropped for the return leg. Oh, 100%. Piss poor performance. <laughs> Piss poor performance. Many giveaways there. Yeah. Just no possession in midfield whatsoever. And at the end of the wire here, interestingly, and this is, I have to remember everybody, uh, Martin Osegaard's word, not mine. Uh, JFK is ugly hot. That's what it says here. I Which can see. I could back that all the way. Yeah. I might put some money on that as well because I think it's sort of just him being relatively young for a president, him being sort of relatively cool for a president and his association with some celebs like um, Marilyn Monroe. Don't know if you've heard of her, but there was, there's been some talk in the papers recently about them maybe getting it on in a hotel. He's done a lot for his street cred then. Done a lot for his street cred. And I think that means he, he's now like, he's sort of hotter than he actually is. I think if you actually just took a look at him, He's a bit of a munter. Yeah, if like JFK was working in a fucking Sainsbury's local, you wouldn't you wouldn't look at him twice. But exactly. as a president, he's looking looking pretty good. Well, when you compare him to the sort of ancient fucks that have he's been with in the past sort of hundred years, he is looking pretty fresh compared to them. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> now, as always, we end with our musical serenade, and this is a tribute to one of the great heroes of mine. This is if "Love Story" by Taylor Swift was from the perspective of Jeffrey Dahmer. You were 22 when I first paid you 50 bucks and six beers to fillet me in my flat It smells bad, ignore the hat You were an innocent, beautiful geezer You asked if there was any ice in my freezer Don't look there I've got a dinner plan prepared I'm gonna mince your leg into a keema naan And fry your ass like a katsu don You know I love a little bit of human brain in my spag bowl Oh, I'll cook agli oi oli o with dustings of your skin flakes Butchering your rump, I've sliced it into big steaks Michelin's impressed cause I'm chefing like I'm Heston Nothing on the bone cause I'm nasty with the weapons Squeeze your balls into a patty like a whopper Put you on a skewer, spin you like a donna Cover you in garlic, sell you out of my van Dahmer in the kitchen, cooking up some top scraps Oh well I'm gonna eat your sharpened balls for dinner. There we go. <laughs> 9.4. We'll take that score. Thank you very much for watching Radio Rufus. It's been another rollicking, rampaging, rambunctious episode full of everything you could ever want. So like, comment, subscribe, share, shout it from the rooftops, write it on the skyline, and we'll be back next week with another episode. Back to you in the studio.